do a soup and salad today. Nothing too exciting. Um, well, this is kind of exciting. At the library, they've started giving away um, snacks. At the, oh, yeah, yeah. It's a psychologist who's working at the... Oh, I don't know what that desk is called. It's some sort In, of a... It's not the info desk. No, it's it's one for... Oh, that's right. They've had a guy from Nepal, or very educated, uh, I think, or Bhutan, somewhere around there. Uh, but it's uh, as you turn away from the uh, checkout yes. desk, it's uh, towards the west. Yes. Mm -hmm. So there's different information on... Sometimes there's um, some useful stuff there. They have a lot of information for people if um, about you know what kind of services there are public yeah, services exactly. and really there's never hardly ever anybody at the desk that yeah, is exactly. being served mm -hmm. so really the public service the people that people from the public that are being helped are the people sitting behind the desk to a certain extent. Yeah. Sometimes I've seen two people there and I think that's a slight case of overkill. Right? I think it's basically for uh, people that are called or characterized as marginalized. Uh, I don't know. You know, like, uh, I have problems with that designation when there are people. I'm not saying all are. But when there are people who've marginalized themselves through uh, drug abuse and uh, stuff like that. You know, like, uh, I've had to be put on opioids and I got off of them right away, four days, so didn't feel a thing, so um, I have little sympathy, I was on them for a year, it's not as though I was on them for a couple of days or something like that, I was on them for more than a year, more than a year, so um, yeah, it would have been a year and a month and a half approximately, we'll say a month, a year and a month, because I don't like overestimating and it was serious enough so that the docs had told me go, you know, go turkey on, cold turkey on them. And uh, I didn't have a choice, really. Uh, I lost the stuff in the luggage. You know, it was at the bottom of the car somewhere. So, uh, and we were hiking. We were hiking. And I think that might have been the thing that prevented me from you. feeling yeah, anything the because the endorphins kind mm -hmm. of uh, acted as a... Uh, believe me, I was in a lot of pain, but it was because of my back. Mm -hmm. I've got five fractured vertebrae, and we walk, I think, on average, ten miles a day for, the, for two full days and two part plus two partial days. We were on the road. Well, we were on the road almost uh, four full days, but uh, we didn't have for the beginning and final day on the road, we didn't have that much time, right? It's still 10 miles a day. It doesn't seem like much, but for someone with my back, it's stunning. You know? a stunning achievement. But well, what they were saying was, uh, before I got the stem cell therapy, and not that much before, as for hiking, don't expect miracles. And yeah. That wasn't like hiking in the mountains. Uh, we weren't doing, well, we ended up do, doing one uh, that I believe characterizes at least moderate I think it's uh, moderately difficult but uh, I made a mistake and uh, picking it out or something like that because I didn't want to pick it out of time but uh, yeah it was uh, that even at the start of that every step I took and I'm not into exaggeration I had I groaned out loud I, I had help. to run back to get the car yeah, I couldn't have made it back. Have made it back. I couldn't have made it back. Uh, we I walked a long way that day. So, I wouldn't have made it back. We walked many miles before I mm -hmm. pulled the plug. I think Pauline might have been here. No, I think it was my suggestion. It was, it was my pleading. So, uh, have you got any books to talk about or anything? Hmm. I'm going to talk about my snacks. Oh, there we go. What sort of snack is it? I'm not going to tell you. Brandy. Oh, that's right. Yeah. But it know. says that it 
made with real cheese, made with in very small print, and then real cheese in all caps. Mm. And then um, baked cracker, a star flavored filling, cheddar cheese star, right? And then this cheddar cheese in big with the little asterisk. And then um, below in smaller print, asterisk flavored filling. So it's actually the made with real cheese thing. I, I don't know. That's pretty funny. And um, are these some of these things then? Yeah, those the cheese are fillings. for you. I've counted them out. I'm going to so have one right now. It says that they're stuffed full of awesome. Stuffed full of awesome. I thought yeah. it was cheese and not no. that full. Of, but. Um, and what is awesome? Well, it's a whole bunch of things. There's a big... Well, I get a bald when it's a whole and bunch of things. Including and it's in yellow a five lake, yellow six lake, blue one lake. Wow. I'm barely tasting the cheese. Hydrolyzed <laughs> corn, gluten, natural flavor. Lactic. Do they claim to have cheese in there? Um, <laughs> yes. Baker's and cheddar cheese blend. Baker's cheese, eh? Okay. Something I've never heard of, but I can hardly claim to be a cheese aficionado. There's, there's a lot of things in there. Yeah, too much. I mean, just mm. give me the cheese and, and give me I'm the beef. No. Uh -huh. And the dogs are going to have a few. Because, um, I'm having nine. Well, um, give me Ritz crackers. I know I'm saying we don't have the pack. We're not flashing them. Yeah. But the cheese crackers, they're better. But this, it says that there's about six servings per bag, hmm. per container, it says. And, I mean, that was given away as a treat at the library because the psychologist said she wants to encourage that people snack more. Well, instead of chowing down on huge big meals, maybe. Hmm. But if it's snacked on top of a... A bunch of meals mm. with a current lack of activity amongst most people in our society. That's a recipe for something not quite disaster, but this, I, I, I don't want to indulge in uh, the rhetorical device of overstatement or a trope, as the folk gauches like saying. But uh, of course, they're the worst offenders when it comes to troping us um, pretty well uh, you know in this era of climate catastrophe and stuff like that I'm, I'm just waiting as I've said before for it to uh, inflate to climate holocaust yeah getting but hot under the collar already. I was looking forward to eating these crackers this way when I saw them yeah because I knew that I had a can of tomato soup that was given to us yeah at home and I never liked tomato soup. And when I met you my never ex, liked it. Yeah, no, yeah. I couldn't stand it. Mm -hmm. And you did like the cream of mushroom, though. Yes. I like cream of mushroom and tomato. Yeah. But when I met my ex, he was like, "Tomato soup's the best." And I was like, "No." And he said, "You put cheddar in it." And that's what my mom did too. You put cheddar cubes and it melts and yeah. it gets all stringy. Mm -hmm. And um. So he made me some, and I was like, yeah, let's, let's go, go this way. Mm. So I'm, lately I'm reminiscing, um, I'm using food as a memory device to think about good times with people from my past. And this was cheese with tomato soup. So, so it's, it's good to be able to think of uh, a guy in uh, positive terms. Uh, that's one thing he was good at, was cooking. Yeah? He taught me how to cook a lot of things, yeah. like a lot of basic things that people should know, like how to make a white sauce. There we go. Now, don't take it as a sign of uh, approval that I'm eating this. I'm just eating stuff that's not going to mess up my hands, and I'm hungry because mm. you know, it's about an hour and a half after I'd ordinarily have a meal. I was getting a treatment over at the hospital. Didn't have much choice. Anyway, yeah. 
it's important to be able to eat just something as I won't say homely because people are going to misunderstand it, but as plain as tomato soup. Because sometimes, <coughs> most of the time, making food, being a good cook, it's just having food on the table. My mom was a great cook, but she was also a good cook. Seven kids. Yeah, well, we're eating instant right now because James just got back from the hospital. Yeah. And I didn't know when he was going to get back. Sometimes it's a little hard to tell. Yeah. I'm moving sometimes quite slowly. Um, when I get out, it's, it's tough on my back. My back's up. I have the five fractured vertebrae. If I, it just gets a little bit wrong. It's hurting for days afterwards. Hurting extra much. So you brought out the atlas. I did, but first I want to talk about Jason Kenny. Oh, what did he do now? Well, did he come back from holidays? Yeah, he got back from his, holidays. Uh, <laughs> Probably got a nice tan. Maybe too bad he didn't go right into a ventilation, a ventilator or something like that. Pushing poor immune system compromised people out of the way, much like Boris Johnson, because that's frankly what the guy would do. Boris Johnson should have just bit the missile, not the bullet, and said, I'm sacrificing my life for at least one person, and I'm coming in a ventilator. Because he caught that on, on his own recognizance, as it were. What a scumbag. I'd like to know how many people died because of his, died for his indiscretions. You know? I suspect it was at least one. They were rushing that fat. I must say gutted. I was thinking of another portion of the anatomy. Crank into a, a ventilator. Uh, he'd been seen shaking hands with people. And I don't think either parties would have been masking and stuff like that. Anyway, all of a sudden, some of the restrictions are back on again. Jason, buddy, make up your mind. Are you having a little trouble finding it there in between your ears? Mm. And the big trouble is, the flunkies they've got on the CBC, here's what I'm hearing, takes a big man to a uh, reverse field. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wouldn't have to be a big man if he'd actually used that wee little bit of gray matter he's got between his ears. I'm assuming he does have a little bit. He manages to manipulate people who are even stupider than him to stay in the party. I'm talking about the wild, wild rosers. To stay in that wild party of his, the United Conservative Party. So it's just some of them, of course. Some of the restrictions. It's basically saying to, he's basically saying to people, if you're non-vaccinated, don't get together and have shindigs. Yeah. But uh, there were ma there were masking required, I think, and it might be shopping situations. I'm not sure. Uh, I just heard the one announcement. And it wasn't really an announcement. It was someone reporting it at second hand, as it were. I think it was during that uh, phone-in program. Yeah, just at the end. Yeah. But the numbers, <laughs> poor Dina Hinshaw. Why am I saying poor? She's poor in spirit. I'm not in the biblical. She said, "They." I must have heard the news or part of it. She was saying we've gone from in a week from being in a low situation to. I think she was saying borderline high, or high situation. 95% of the ICUs present, they constituted, are now taken up with uh, COVID patients, ICU beds or whatever. So it's hilarious. Uh, but why am I borderline crying? 
takes a big man to let dozens of people die while he's out while he's out uh, holidaying and gallivanting around and then to change his mind. It takes a big man to take that long to change his mind and let people die. I don't call it being a big man. I mean, what he's got, to, what he's doing is trying to hang, hang on to political power for dear life. It has nothing to do with being a big man and having a and conscience. And while telling people, yeah, if you're not uh, vaccinated, don't have shindigs. Or it should be everyone. That's well, that doesn't even matter because there, if, without any enforcement, no. we've already seen that people. Do or whatever. They do whatever they want. It's like and driving in a parking lot. It's lying smart turned lines. Alberta into a ma- all of Alberta into a maskless rodeo. <laughs> then Yeah, I like that rodeo. That's wonderful. Yeah. You know. Then um you you don't know who's vaccinated and who isn't. And the people who don't want to be masked or vaccinated, they know that too. So they're not masked. They're just strutting around. Hey, no one's going to ask me. No, you know. yeah. What, if they do, I'll just pound do? them out. Uh, I'm dressed so, in camouflage in the middle of the city, and I'm advertising. Whatever. I'm a. No, they're not. They look like anybody else, and that's the thing. Is you don't know. Well, right, you don't really know. No. So. I assume if they're strutting around in camouflage. Recently, um, somebody told me that uh, the school that they work in isn't going to. Uh, require masking. I think it's going to change as a result school. of this. But. Well, I hope so mm-hmm. because I worry about her. I worry about her too. I worry about the and, kids. Well, I do too. Mm-hmm. But at um, at least if you live in Quebec, they are they've covered one round of in vitro for everybody under 40 again they've reinstated that so um because you don't know what um this is going to do to people's fertility for example you have no idea what it's going to do to anything in the long run it may be long run complications it should be documenting out there you catch it if you've caught it all the skunkiness that happens to you down the road because you should sue as class action or as a personal individual all the flunkies responsible for this sort of stuff also if you are related to people who've died you got a, a, enough money sue the stinking socks off of not just Justin Trudeau and Theresa Tam and Jason Kenney or if you're in Ontario, Douglas Lugford, or uh, where's my angel? Where's my angel? Uh, um, oh, there she is. The uh, that flunky in uh, Quebec who is it? Legault. Did you want this angel? Angel, what's this? Is it good? the flunky in Manitoba? Pallister, the flunky in. Uh, she says it's not good. Saskatchewan. What's his name? Scott Moe. And maybe even that NDP or. Is this good, Opie? No, uh, BC. He says no, it's not good. Elvis licked it and he doesn't think it's that good. What's that, that treat? Well, there you go. <laughs> if you manage to figure out what sort of treat no, it is. he's run away with it now, so we'll it's, see. It's not really past the dog test treat. No, Opie doesn't want it. Let's see if Paris wants it. Anna Fred will eat anything. She will, including stuff that's to be found on the deck. Um, so, yeah, she's eating it. Meals. And Paris is eating it. Mm-hmm. Well, Paris you really eating it. Want to try it now, too. Opie, since the other dogs are eating it? He says okay. Yeah, he's usually he, he's reluctant. He really he doesn't like trying new things, honestly. Yeah, he But did. he likes weird things, like uh-huh. vegetable stuff, like uh-huh. broccoli and things like that. Cukes? Does he like cukes? I don't know. That'd be a little Yeah, sharp, maybe he likes cukes. I can't remember. He likes. I mean, some vegetable things that every dog seems to like almost, like mm-hmm. carrots. Mm-hmm. If they're, they love carrots. Yeah, mm-hmm. seem to... yeah. Opie's got the ears. He could be a rabbit. Yeah. 
there's some greenery. I see them wandering around with peppers. They love peppers. Yeah, bell peppers. Mm-hmm. Weird. Yep. I think they like the red ones better, but or best. Yeah. Because there are several different colors, not just two. Anyway, should I give the... Yeah, you go the, ahead and talk about whatever you Okay. You have the atlas. So I was talking to a refugee from the Middle East a while back, and then the last one. And he seemed to have been quite an educated fellow, right? He knew his geography very well. Yes, he traveled quite a lot. He traveled quite a lot, and he retained it. A lot of people traveled, and they couldn't care less. And, uh, you know, he knew where... Th- and, of course... I knew. I better just give you guys one of these for now. It was hard to figure out. Maybe one more. To later a certain on. extent, what he was saying. He's yeah, done a good job in the five that. years he's been so, here. Because I want to you know, make sure you won't get sick off this stuff. He talked a little bit politics, and he, I liked the guy, but I didn't want to hear the politics. But he talked about it. Uh, you know, I wasn't. I'm not going to tell him. Say no politics. Two crumbs. But according to him, the people who are where and are causing oh. the problem in Syria I'll give the crumbs to are, are the Americans and the Russians. Yes, the Russians, the Americans. Okay. You know, they have a saying in the United States, we don't have a dog in this fight. Did they have a dog in the fight in Syria? Yeah. It was... Oh, there. That, the American dog in Syria was working out of Jordan and was, uh, we're not going to call it a dog in general, we're going to call it a 3.5 pound chihuahua. Whereas uh, the Russians had, uh, uh, I almost said, uh, Pitbull? Well, yeah, exactly right, but uh, Assad. Assad is a lion. It's not definitely not a Shih Tzu, but, you know, they're pretty p- Pacific. But that uh, a sad guy and his dad were absolute brutes. The members of the Bath Party, uh, a little bit different than the Bath Party, uh, the Renaissance Party is basically what it means that, again. And uh, under Saddam Hussein in Iraq back in the day. So a little bit different, but uh, you know their methods and means, really mean means, um, somewhat similar. So that, that's Russia's dog in the fight. And uh, then I didn't hear him mention Turkey. Not in that context. He talked a lot about Turkey. He'd been in Turkey. You know, he knew about Diyarbakir, uh, Mardin. Mm-hmm. I, he couldn't figure out what I was saying, Nusaybin. I must have been mispronouncing it. You see, like I figured out where he was from. See? Mm-hmm. See, he mentioned Mardin. When I mentioned Diyarbakir, I was I who mentioned it. Uh, he said, Yeah, yeah, Diyarbakir. I, I might have been putting the accent on the wrong syllable. I mentioned Jizre, probably the accent on the wrong syllable here. You see how I, I was able to locate from his description where he was, right? Or where he'd come from, I should say. So a long time ago, I knew who was running ISIS in the Middle East. Okay? I'm going to show you my analysis. I've got this stuff. I don't need the atlas. This is why you... The other day I was talking about the value of memorization. This is how you can do analysis like this, right? Yeah. I was going, who's running ISIS? He has in his brain. He knows where all the rivers are, all the everything. Yeah, that's how I found out where Paradise or Eden is located. Maybe I'll give that away. Lots of people conjecture about it. Eden is just Sumerian, actually, for plain. Uh, here we go. This will be close enough, or will it be too close? Mm. You want me to look. Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't. I wasn't thinking of that. Oh, yes. Okay. You can see. So it's all of Syria shows here. Okay. People so here's be able to see the 